Ciao and benvenuti to Untold Italy. I'm Josie. And I'm Katie, and we're here to help you plan your trip to Italy. Between us, we have many years of travel experience, and we want to help you uncover your own, as yet untold stories and adventures in Italy. Each episode, you'll hear practical advice, tips and ideas to help you plan your own trips to the magical land of history, stunning landscapes and a whole lot of pasta. We'll have interviews from experts and focus on local destinations and frequently ask questions about travel in Italy. Thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe to our show. Now let's get started on your regular dose of Bella Italia. Ciao everyone, hope you're staying safe and resting in place at home if you need to. Today Josie and I thought we would start sharing a few of our favourite places to visit in Italy and why we love them. These are going to be our top tens and our favourite places and experiences in Italy and I have to tell you it was pretty hard to choose. I agree Katie, some of my ten, I've looked at your list and my list is a little bit different but some um major ones that we both really enjoy are very similar. So I think it'll be exciting to go through our top 10. Yeah. And what we're going to do is share what we love about the place and some of our favourite memories and experiences that we've had there. So without further ado, I'm going to start with number 10. And number 10 for me is Orvieto. Now, if you don't know this place, it's a hilltop town in Umbria and Umbria is a region to the north of Rome. So Orvieto is a hill town and it's basically up high overlooking a valley, overlooking the Terni Valley, and it's known for its cathedral, which has got amazing mosaics and frescoes, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful town that you can visit very easily uh, on a day trip from Rome or actually what I did in November, which was have a stop in Orvieto on our way from Florence, sorry, from Rome to Florence. So it was a really wonderful place to stop and you can leave your luggage at the train station and then there's a uh, cable car that you get up the hill, the funicular, and you go from up into this beautiful, amazing town. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's really interesting actually because apart from the cathedral, which is probably the main attraction, they've also got the Well of St. Patrick and it's got a double helix staircase. So if you don't know what that is, it's a staircase that goes down and a separate one that goes up in a spiral. And there's 248 steps down and 248 steps up. And so it's a really beautiful piece of architecture that you can go and enjoy. And one of the other things that they have there is the underground tunnels, which were built oh, by... Oh, wow. Yeah, there's, they were built by Etruscans like thousands of years ago. And so it's a very old and ancient city, Orvieto, and it's got a lot of things going for it. It's got the cobbled streets. And when we went there, it was fall or autumn and the tr- leaves were changing colour and there was someone roasting chestnuts and there oh. was... <laughs> yeah. It sounds beautiful. Yep, and it's that's a really good time to visit as well, actually, because it's truffle season and there's a lot of pasta with truffles and you can have that with some beautiful Orvieto wine, which is very famous, and it's a, um, a, a recognised wine, a DOC wine, and it was a very wonderful day out and I w- was very sad that I only had a day there, actually, and I'd love to go back there. So that's my number 10 is Orvieto, and I think that if you were – in Rome for a few days and you wanted to go and see some of the countryside and one of the hilltop towns, it's a really fantastic place to go and I really just loved it. Oh, wow, that sounds beautiful. I'd love to have the pasta with the truffle. I think there's nothing better than that authentic Italian pasta with that from that that region with the truffle and the wine. I think that sounds amazing, especially because uh, by the time everyone gets this, uh, we've all been in lockdown for quite a few weeks. Um, So anything like that sounds amazing. It really was, and it was really quite, you know, crisp and cold outside. So when we went inside to the restaurant, and there's lots of little restaurants there, we went inside and we got cosy and settled in with our pasta. It was just, uh, you know, it's what that's the type of things you dream of actually when you're thinking of Italy. But well, I do anyway. <laughs> so how did you get there? Was it did you fly in or did you drive in or did you train it? Which way did you go? Yeah, well, so you can get the train really easily from uh, Roma Termini. So uh, it's only an hour. From Tamini, so it's really easy to get to uh, on a day trip, or as a, like we did 
um, just stopping through on the way through to Florence because it's on the same train line. So it's a really oh, fantastic, easy one to get to. Amazing. All right. So that was amazing for your top ten. What is your number nine on your list? Now, Josie, you're going to – I think you're going to be a bit shocked about my number nine Mm -hmm. (laughs) because it's actually – look, I think it will be higher up, but I just didn't spend uh, as much time as I would like there and I'd like to go back. But because I didn't spend so much time there, I think that it's it's at number nine for a reason. But anyway, it was one of the best days of my life uh, and it's Capri, the beautiful island of Capri. Yes, I am surprised it is number nine and I think that you probably would need to go and spend more time there because I think you'll find that it will go way up the top of your list. But, okay, um, I can't wait to hear the rest of them up the top of the list. So yeah. what did you do in Capri on that one day? Well, it was only only half a day because we did go around the island on a boat tour, which obviously I loved. It was just That's honestly one of the highlights of my life. And that t- took the best part of a few hours and, you know, it's one of those experiences you really have to have. And as I've, I think we've mentioned several times, the smaller the boat you can get to do that, the better because you'll be able to get closer to the grottos and also through the Ferraglioni rocks, which are the amazing rock formations that Capri is famous for. But after that, we, we went and explored the town, but we just, we didn't know, we only saw the town of Capri and some beautiful views, stunning views, and we sauntered around the shops, etc. But we didn't really have as much time to explore in further details. I would have loved to have gone to Anna Capri and um, Piccolo Marina and just Mm -hmm. stayed there and done some beach clubs and watched the sunset from Capri. So I really would love to go back. And I think, you know, that's why I think I put it at number nine really because I think I just want to go back. (laughs) Well, it's still in your top ten, so that's good to know. It is. And we didn't even see the Blue Grotto. So maybe uh, if I did see the Blue Grotto, then it would definitely be up at number 10 or up mm. up higher on my list at least. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, so moving from number nine, because, I mean, half a day, we get it. Um, so your number eight, I'm interested in that. If you put Capri as your number nine, what is your number eight? Well, for number eight, it's actually Pienza and the Val d'Orsha, which mm-hmm. is uh, a region of Tuscany that's really, it's actually quite close to Orvieto actually. So, it's um, in the south of Tuscany, which is a quite a big region, and it's really famous for hilltop towns and wine. And we went on a day trip, not a day trip, it was a day trip as well, to be honest, but we drove down from Florence and we stopped at um, a few places along the way, including Montepulciano, and we eventually ended up in Pienza, which is a beautiful, beautiful town that was recommended to me by a tour guide that I had up in the Brescia region. And she, I asked her, what is the number one place that you love to visit in Italy? And she said, oh, Pienza. So I was like, right, that's going on my list. So I was very keen to go there and we drove, it was late fall, or late autumn, it was around November, I think. And we were just driving through that countryside that is very well known um, you know, if you were seeing any pictures of the Italian countryside for cypress trees and winding roads and these hilltop towns that sort of look out over this beautiful scene. And Pienza was uh, actually designed very specifically to be the ideal town. And it certainly kind of, for me anyway, lives up to that name. Uh, it looks beautiful. I'm just... Uh... I've just had a look at a couple of images while while I'm doing this and it looks like there's lots of obviously you still get the food and wine experience that you would get um, in Tuscany there, um, but it looks amazing. Yeah, it really is and it's really cute because the streets in Pienza have, um, they've got names that are like the name of love and it's like the um, Kiss Street, Bachi Street and it's really, it's a lovely place and there's a, a beautiful palazzo there that was owned by uh, the Pope. Uh, so it was home, the actual Pienza was home to one, at least one Pope, I think maybe two. And, yeah, the Pope could um, design this beautiful town and also gave himself, obviously, the best views. And so these views look down over the valley and you can see some of the other towns in the distance. It's actually magnificent and we really loved it. Now, um, in autumn, what's really interesting is they have their Pecorino Cheese Festival 
and it's quite famous because it apart from eating the cheese which is always a good idea what they do is they roll the cheese wheels down the hill and I think if you may have seen that I think but yeah 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 <laughs> it's quite funny but um it's a very good pecorino cheese and you can go to little shops around the town and taste the cheese and they've got truffle pecorino and they've got lots oh. of different <laughs> flavored cheese but they've also obviously in that region they've got a lot of different wineries so you've got um and and wine regions so you've got montepulciano and montalcino which a very famous wine region. So it's, you know, it's got everything really, hilltop towns, beautiful food and amazing wine. I loved and it. With, and with that, did you stay or is it like, because I can see it's quite close to Florence. So do you stay in Florence and do day trips or how, how do you, what did you do and how, how do you recommend getting there? Well, <laughs> this is the thing. So what we did was uh, – it's a really funny story, actually. So a really good friend of mine, Luana, she was going to be in Italy from Australia and she hadn't been there for a long time. And it just so happened that I was visiting Florence for a few days with my husband. And anyway, so it was at the same time. Luana was driving from Rome to, I think, in Montepulciano and we were going to be in Florence and needed to get to Pisa for our flight. And so I just said, oh, well, why don't we just meet up for lunch? And it's just one of these crazy things that you do in life. And I said, it's like, yeah, no worries. We'll just meet you in Tuscany for lunch. Why not? So <laughs> so that's what we did. And we, well, we got up really early and we drove from Florence. And it does take a little longer than probably what you think. It takes at least an hour and a half. So you need to factor that in. And a lot of the roads are really windy around there. So it's not as fast as what you think. But We ended up, we went to Pienza and then we met our friends at a little tiny little village called Montechiello and we had lunch at a place called Osteria La Porta and it's a very, it was a great afternoon I have to say and we just loved it. And then we drove back through the Chianti countryside to Pisa where we caught our flight back to London and it was like, it was one of those pinch yourselves moments because there's not many times in your life that you can say you met a friend for lunch in Tuscany sounds amazing it really was so um yeah and I mean I hadn't seen my friend for a few years so it was it was really one of those crazy travel moments no amazing I I hope to one day say that I did that too Katie that sounds awesome well I'd just like to do it over again but (laughs) (laughs) it might be a bit difficult from Australia Oh, especially at the moment, so which is great. Um, and I've I've just found out some in, interesting information. Um, so Penenza, the small town as you've been describing it, was actually the name comes from Pope Pius II, who was born there. Yep, which is yeah. interesting. He, yeah, he's the one that designed this ideal town. And yeah, he he really wanted to make it the most perfect town, and I have to say, it pretty much is. It's really lovely. Oh, it looks beautiful. All right, so we're up to uh, number seven on your list. Number seven is, and we're going completely in the other direction, and we're going to take a uh, jump over the Bay of Naples, and we're going to go to Sicily. And this is another one where I didn't spend enough time at, but I was absolutely smitten by this place. I thought it was magic. I really just want to go back there as soon as I can. And this place is called Ortesia, and it's in Sicily. And Ortesia is the old town of Siracusa, and it is just amazing. It's how you imagine an Italian seaside town to be, and it's one of those places that it just really got under my skin, to be honest. So what you do is uh, when you, you go to Siracusa, and Ortesia is a little, it's actually a little island off off the city there, and so you have to go across a bridge to get there. And it's got those narrow cobble, narrow cobbled streets that open onto the piazzas and the cobbled streets are tiny so you can't get cars down there and they're strung with washing and you can just smell amazing smells all around you. And then it's, you know, jutting out onto it as it's an island, it's jutting out into the sea and sea breezes are coming in. 
the sun no, shining. It's actually amazing. Uh, we stayed there for a night. Um, and the funny thing was we drove the car and I had no clue where we were going. <laughs> and I actually had to squeeze this big Audi through these streets and realised that that was not going to work. So I actually found a little parking bay and said to my husband, this is where it's going to stay for the next two days. Um, we literally walked around that city. It was amazing, 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 amazing. Yeah, and, like, I don't know if you went to the fish market there, uh, but they they have this amazing market there. And it's, you know, I think now some of the markets can be a bit uh, not as, I guess, exciting but because they may have be more catering towards tourists, but this is a true local fish market and there's the people shouting and everyone's haggling over their different produce and it was just so vibrant and fun and I loved it. And then... We, once we'd been to the market, we sort of needed to have a sit down and then something amazing happened. Did not research this one, which is normally not my style, but I did actually find the best cannoli that I have ever eaten in my entire life. In the piazza? Yep. Yeah. So, I think everyone knows that one uh, cannoli <laughs> place. I, I agree. I can't remember it's, the name, but I'll put it in the show uh, notes. Well, it was just, oh, my goodness, I'm still thinking about that cannoli, I've got to say. It's one of those things. Oh. Brilliant. I think I think one of the things we loved is that you walked around and wherever you ate, the food was amazing. And the, the seafood, if you love seafood, honestly, you can get a little seafood basket. You can get the best pasta and seafood you've ever had. I, I, I dream about the food that we got there. So I 100% agree. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I really, I, I don't know, like Sicily is, if you wanted to get, I don't like to use the word authentic so much because I think authentic means different things to different people but if you wanted to see how Italians live in Sicily then you can't have a better introduction to that than Ortizia I don't think. No I agree with you I think it's amazing I think yeah from the old city to the new city for the walking for the food and the culture and the yeah I think it's amazing I agree with you well that Oh, that made me excited again. I, I love Sicily. I think it doesn't matter what um, part or where you go, but I, I think there's different parts of Sicily and I, I, I've seen a few, your your whole list of 10, so I know that there is another place that comes up later in your top 10, so we'll get to that. Um, your number six, Katie. Oh, well, this is a really special one to me and it's because I love the Italian lakes and they were the first area that I went to actually in Italy many years ago. But this lake is really special to me because my cousin suggested that we visit here um, after visiting her and being in a wedding in Switzerland. So it's sort of in the north in the Piedmont region and it's close to Milan, about an hour's drive away. But it is not a very famous lake, but it is absolutely beautiful and the name of the, of the lake is Lake Orta and there's a little town there called Orta San Giulio and it is just beautiful it's picturesque and it's just I can't even I'm finding I'm getting emotional trying to describe it because what what you have there is a it's a very compact lake it's not these big grand ones like Como or Maggiore or Garda it's a small lake but in the middle of it there's an island and on the islands built a monastery it's now an abbey and it's it, they're medieval buildings and it just looks absolutely stunning and you just gasp when you see it to be honest because you've got the hills all around and then you've got this tiny lake and this island in the middle that you can get to by ferry but it's just gorgeous and I would go back there in a heartbeat. How beautiful. And is there much to do for a day or would you stay a night? What what would you what would you recommend? Well, I mean, if you had time, I would definitely recommend staying there at least one or two nights because you would be able to just explore. And there's actually quite a lot of things to do to explore there. But the favourite thing to do is to really just wander around the lakeside That's and beautiful. the town. So Orta San Giulio is this really pretty town and it's, you know, got the cobbled streets and the draping wisteria. I mean, don't get me started on the draping wisteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but you're like... <laughs> You're walking through this town and you get those little lake glimpses through the buildings and then suddenly you walk out onto this piazza, which is Piazza Motta, and it, it's, this island is just there just looking at you and it's 
It's amazing. Now you can get the like I said, you can get the ferry over there, but you need to know something before you go. And that is that it's the the nuns that live in the abbey there ask you to go there in silence. Oh wow. Yes, so it's because it's a very tiny island, and basically the basilica there takes up the whole most of the island. So it's part, you know, that's their culture and yeah. how they live. Now uh, we had three-year-old toddlers at that time, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we decided not to uh, upset the balance of that. So I would love to go back and actually go onto the island, but also around the town, there's also a place called Sacra Monte di Orta, and it's uh, a UNESCO-listed site actually, and it's dedicated to Saint Francis of Assisi. And it's this, basically the whole hilltop has a series of chapels and shrines that depict. St Francis's life and it's all over the hill near the, near the town so you can actually hike up there and walk around this very special site. Wow, sounds amazing, sounds beautiful. It really is and I think from there as well you could use it as a base to explore Lake Maggiore and, and other parts of Piedmont so I would you know you wouldn't have to ask me twice to go back there I absolutely love that place it was it was beautiful and I think one of the things that made it really special was we got there and we were super hungry and we saw the the pizzeria or the restaurant right on the lake shore and you think, oh, they're never going to give us a lakeside view, but guess what they did? Oh, wow. <laughs> we got the best view and we were like, wow, this is amazing. But it's not so busy there. It does get busy with some more European tourists, but, mm. um, yeah, definitely worth visiting. Fantastic. Well, it sounds amazing. And I've I've just been looking at some of the photos as you've been talking. So it looks amazing. So your number five, this is a place that I have never been and I would love to go to. So when people think of Tuscany, they think of Florence, obviously. They think of Siena and they usually think of Pisa as the main cities that you can go to to explore in Tuscany. But for me, the city of Lucca is really, really special and I think it's very much underlooked and people should definitely take a look at it because I'll tell you why. There's so many, many reasons to stay in Lucca. First of all, it's a beautiful walled city and it's got, you know, the ancient medieval walls around the city and in, in the middle there's the medieval tower. So Lucca was actually very well known for high-rise towers. Many of them have disappeared now, but there's you know, there's, there's a couple that remain that you can go to the top of. It's also known for beautiful churches and piazzas and it was the home of Puccini, the opera. Mm-hmm. Yep, beautiful. Uh, maestro. And it's it's very famous for that and they hold a nightly concert of his works in a beautiful Baroque church there and you can go there every night. It only lasts an hour, so even if you're not into opera, in a big way then you can go and hear a selection of his works in the church and it's conveniently timed to be between aperitivo and dinner which i think is amazing how smart are they (laughs) very smart (laughs) so you can go there and and listen to the the, uh, puccini arias which if you've never heard of puccini aria you really need to um i'll post a couple on the show notes because they're just beautiful and but the, the main thing that the Luca is famous for is the wall of its city wall. So what they did in, I think it's in the 18th or 19th century, what they did in Luca was transform the wall into a park. So now it's a park. And so you can hire bikes, rent bikes and ride around the city walls and enjoy the beautiful views from the walls of the countryside around and also just get some exercise. I think it's about, it's a few kilometres and, you can bike ride or walk it or do whatever. And so it was just a great and a di- slightly different because, you know, sometimes you're visiting in Italy, you're visiting lots of towns and cities and there's not maybe so much green area to explore. But that's why Luca is a bit different because you have this park around the city walls and it's a really lovely place to explore. Oh, how amazing. Sounds beautiful. Okay, so that's my next time I go to Tuscany. I'm definitely going to go there. Yeah, well, It looks it's- amazing. It's really fantastic for families as well. So if you're – I really recommend families stay in Luca actually over Florence when they're going to Tuscany because there's a few reasons for that. First of all, you've got this outdoor space, which you don't get in many of the cities in Italy. So there's like – apart from that, the walls, around the walls as well, just down from them is like several little playgrounds that you can stop at. So it's great for kids. 
and also it's got a great train station. So the train can take you very easily to Florence and Pisa by train. And if you have a car, you can easily also get to the Tuscan coast. That's only, I think, it's only about 30 minutes drive from there. And it's just wonderful. And also around the countryside, you can see there's the beautiful hills of the northern Tuscan countryside, which are amazing. We had a great lunch there. We, we saw the world's biggest mortadella. Come in. <laughs> It was really good, and uh, we had a great lunch there. And it, oh, I just loved it. We stayed there for about a week, actually, uh, and we had a villa with uh, some extended family members, and it was really fantastic. And actually, I should mention that while we were staying there, um, my parents and my aunt decided to visit the Cinque Terre, and you, you can actually do that from Luca. It's quite, it's much closer than Florence actually to get to the Cinque Terre. Which so if if you wanted to branch out a bit and think of a different base in Tuscany, look, you consider Luca because it is a really fantastic little city. Wow, sounds beautiful. Now, your next one, your number four, is a place that I have so desperately wanted to get to, um, again, back in Sicily. So tell us about this place because I, 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 this is the number one place I want to go. Well, I keep saying that because, but every time I talk, there's always a new place I want to go. But this one, I'm definitely interested. In. <laughs> yeah. So the Val di Noto is a, is an area of Sicily in the south of Sicily, which was destroyed after a catastrophic earthquake in the 17th century. And once these towns were flattened, they were rebuilt in Baroque style. And there's several towns actually. I think there's about seven or eight of them. It's and they're called the Val di Noto. So the main town which people know of this style is Noto. It's N O T O, and it, the capital there, Catania, is is somewhat included in that as well. But these are UNESCO listed towns, so that means they're protected under the World Heritage Organization, and they are. Just gorgeous. They are be- they've got beautiful piazzas and gorgeous churches and they were designed in a Renaissance style so it's much more open than your typical medieval towns and cities and they've got the really ornate decorations and gold churches and each of the own each of these towns actually has its own special character. So uh, I think, yeah, Noto is, it's got beautiful wide piazzas and like stunning staircases marble staircases that go up to grand buildings and it's quite stunning actually uh, but I also like to Ragusa which is built on a hill and it's quite steep and therefore it's really dramatic and you can it's got much more smaller streets and it's it's really gorgeous actually and I, I just could keep exploring them forever and it, we only had oh we had a day doing that and and I feel like I need to go back and explore some more because we didn't get to Modica, which is the home to Sicilian chocolate. <laughs> Can't believe I missed that. <laughs> but um yeah, it's just one of those places where you you feel like you've stepped into kind of like a movie. I know some of some famous I think it's the Inspector Contaldo um is that is that the right? I think so. Yeah, the fam- there's a famous Sicilian inspector um, series, detective series, and it's set around there. And they film a lot of those in those towns. But I know my cousin loves uh, ski. I can't pronounce this one. Ski skikli. But it yeah. sounds amazing. I mean, I've been wanting to go to Noto, but I, I mean, I've been lucky to go to Catania, and and you obviously you've seen a lot of um, Sicily. I just think the whole these these little towns and just amazing. You know, from Siracusa to Catania to Noto to to these regions are amazing. And I think oh, you're very lucky to have gone around those ones. I'm I'm very jealous of that one. Yeah, well, I just have these fantastic memories, and they get, keep popping up on my Facebook feed at the moment. Actually, <laughs> we have pictures of us eating the granita, the Sicilian gelati, and just you know, with the brioche and relaxing in piazzas. And it was just, it's just an amazing place. I, I've, Sicily is definitely, definitely the place to go. I love it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I that is definitely again. I keep saying this. That is definitely a place I'm going to go to. So, <laughs> um, so your number three is actually one of my favourite, favourite cities in the whole of the world and definitely in Italy. It's not your number one. I, I, I have to say this would be my number one, but let's go. You, you give me okay. your why it's your number three. 
All roads lead to Rome, don't they? Right. <laughs> I love Rome. Look, oh. you know, but I didn't actually love it at first visit and that may have been due to the company I was keeping at the time and the fact that I didn't have much money at all uh, but and therefore didn't wasn't able to experience some of the amazing things that I have been able to experience since. But crazy, chaotic Rome. There's no place in the world quite like it. It's just got everything that you that you want from a city. It's got the excitement. It's got the small streets that you want to explore and beautiful fountains and secret ruins. And what I do actually really love about Rome is there's a really interesting mix of old and new that you don't often get in Italy. So obviously the ancient uh, part of the city is always there, but you can see innovation everywhere too. And I talked uh, to Erica Fiopo about this on last week's podcast, and I really find that I had to think about it and I thought, well, that's what I really do like about Rome. You have those different eras just melding into this city, which has evolved and been present for over 2,000 years. And it's just one of those places that is evolving and is kind of cool for that. Actually. Yeah, I think it re- respects the old and mixes with the new. And I think there is a, um, a beauty about that. Absolutely. And you can't sort of get ever get away from the old. And somehow that doesn't matter, even though, like, in the yeah. frantic pace of the modern life, I, I think they've got – somehow they've got the mix of blending those two, you know, all those different eras together. And there's nothing that I love more than just kind of wandering around those streets in search of fountains and ruins and just stumbling across the best carbonara you've ever eaten. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's what I love about Rome, the diversity of it, the the old and the new and the respect for the old. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's amazing. So your number two, tell us about your number two. Okay, so coming up on number two is we also spent a week here a few years ago and the kids were pretty little, but it was really such a special time. And I think if you want a beach res- area to go to that's a bit different to the Amalfi Coast is you should consider the Italian Riviera because it is it's people have been going there for a very long time especially British visitors actually ever since the 19th century maybe even before that and look it's just a really beautiful coastline it's it's very it's parts of it are quite refined actually but you can also get the rustic towns that you're looking for so when I say the Italian Riviera I mean the area south of Genoa in the region of Liguria and this region is most famous for the Cinque Terre and Portofino which is a very very ritzy town famous for big super yachts and billionaires and (laughs) etc but we actually spent a week in Santa Margarita Ligure and explored the coastline from there and it's just Oh, oh I'm, I'm a bit of a seaside girl, though, I have to say. So I really love the sea breezes and just breathing that fresh sea air and eating the seafood and enjoying the beach. And I think that's probably why I love it. But it's just got some amazing places to visit. And it's a real shame, actually, that people just go to the Cinque Terre, even though that is beautiful. There's so many other places you can explore. Yeah, I think that it's always good if you're on a shorter trip to do it I think it's definitely not a place to miss the Cinque Terre but you're right I haven't done the full everywhere else and I think that that is something that you can always go back to because I I agree with you I'm a bit of a beach beautiful weather and great food and I think that offers uh, it's in abundance there so yeah I agree with you we stayed a um which is well on my list but I I loved it I absolutely loved that area too So some of the other towns that I can mention that are there, which are really fabulous, uh, there's a fishing village called Kamoli, and it's what it just it's got that retro kind of vibe going. There's there's a really cool little beach club and a Lido there, and the waves crash onto the little peninsula. And there's a there's a beautiful bell tower there, and it's they're colourful buildings that's very typical of that region. So it's a really cool little town. And another one that I really like is Sestri Levante, and that's in built onto a peninsula as well. But on one side, they've got this beautiful little bay called the Baia di Silencio, and it's really gorgeous. And I think some of the you know the famous poets like I think it was Keats, maybe one of those. You know they've written about it. It was just it's just stunning. And then on the other side, they've got 
um, a, more of a sea beach that's not as protected, but you get the, all the beach clubs lined up along there and you can just sit down and enjoy just the local cuisine, which I should mention as well because guess where what comes from around that area is pesto, which mm-hmm. is basil and pine nut sauce. Well, it's not really a sauce, is it? It's more like a, I don't know, how would you describe it? Anyway, I love pesto. It's so lots of basil and olive oil and pine nuts. With pine nuts, it's beautiful. Mm. And they have this pasta called trophy, and I think our kids were calling it the wiggly worm pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love the way kids love it? I love it. It's great. <laughs> well, actually, it was there that my daughter got her first kiss from a little cheeky chap called Takamo. <laughs> <Giacomo. laughs> and then we were and in Santa Margarita, and uh, there was this little kind of outdoor amphitheatre or stage for little local concerts and she was having a little dance to that and she did look pretty cute I have to say and uh, this little kid came up and pinched her cheeks <laughs> and gave her a kiss not oh, too cute oh well, she my gosh. didn't like it very much she, she just screamed but <laughs> it's one of those memories that we have from that area and I really had a wonderful vacation there for a week and I really recommend it to to anyone Oh, fantastic. And not surprising what your number one. So for those listeners who have heard Katie and I, um, Katie has her number one place in Italy. I thought I was going to get some more suspense out of that, but I don't think I do because I've, <laughs> I've been talking no, about No, we all know what you love. <laughs> well, and we do. We do know what I love. And I do, it won't be a surprise to tell you that I do love Venice. And it's because I think it's probably because I went there on my first trip and I just found it truly magical and just there's no place like Venice on earth and it's quite at the moment we're not seeing as much traffic through there so there's some incredible images of the city coming back at this time while we're all staying at home there's no boats going up and down the lagoon and it's very still and there's dolphins in the lagoon which I understand have been there always but they just don't come out because the boats are out Uh, and it just is gorgeous now while I do love all the big sites and I love going and exploring and seeing the, you know, the Piazza San Marco, and which is an incredible site. But I really just love going through the back streets, exploring, finding a quiet campo, which is a little square, and a bar, go Bacari hopping and eating my chiquetti and just watching the gondolas sail bars. And just it's just one of those amazing places on earth that just makes you pinch yourself and makes you feel glad to be alive really yeah I I think it's amazing and I suppose it's interesting because um I I see Venice through your eyes very different to what I've seen Venice and I've been there a few times and I think one thing that always resonates with me and something that always stays is that you are right it's there is no city in the world like Venice um so that that always it always gives me goosebumps when you say that and I and I know how much you love Venice so um thanks for sharing your top 10 that's amazing I've got a few um I've put a few notes down for me to go and visit a few more um and really go into different areas so that was amazing thank you for that well I can't wait to hear yours Josie it's going to be next time we will share Josie's top 10 and see how she thought, because I think it's really important to share these different perspectives because everyone's going to have a different way of looking at building their itineraries and understanding what they want to see. And what I really hope for everyone that listens to this podcast is that you take from it the bits that you need. Like I have a different perspective on what I want out of a vacation to what Josie does. And we like different things and we prefer different things. And that's fine. You have to build your own trip. You might only have one chance to go or even maybe if you're lucky like us, you can go more times. But if whatever you're doing and whatever your trip is, really try and understand the places that you can go that are going to suit you and your travel companions the best. Yeah, I agree, Katie. I think um, it was interesting last night we were talking about with I've got two uh, older daughters um, and we went we went to Italy for a big trip for six weeks and they were 18 and no, actually they were 19 and 20. Um, and I think some of my top 10 places comes from the amazing memories that we had and the, and the two and the places that we loved together. Um, and I think that, um, and I think you're right, 
if you've only got a short amount of time, then there is key places, which we've also spoken about on our podcast when we plan itineraries. Um, but I think that there is other places which, you know, some of the places you've been to, I haven't, but I am dying to go. So, um, yeah, my top 10 are probably going to be more around um, the the ones that everyone's aware of. I think yours are those very different ones, which I'm looking forward to going to. But uh, I've got a few different ones in there as well. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. I can't wait. Okay, everyone, as always, we'll put some details of how you can learn more about all of our top 10 in the show notes. And you can also join us to discuss more about this on the Italy Travel Planning Facebook group, our online community. Thanks for joining us. And if you like the show, please give us a review and subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. See you next time. Ciao for now.